Hi, this is a physics lesson on chapter 21, magnetism. And so on your syllabus for today, I had you doing sections 21.1 through 21.4. Also going to add to that 21.7 through 21.8. So you'll need to read those areas in your textbook. And then I'll have a problem set I'll send in this email <laughs> where I have this video link in, okay? So real quick, walking through this chapter in magnetism, and uh, you guys have already done uh, your lab in mapping a magnetic field, okay? So the concept of how the uh, magnetic field lines should look, and that should help you understand uh, how uh, electric field lines kind of look too, especially when uh, there's two charges involved. Okay, so walking through chapter 21 here, um, <coughs> section 21.1, the history of magnetism, that's uh, a little interesting, not so much hit on your video. You've also watched your crash course video on magnetism. Uh, section 21.2, <coughs> Excuse me. The description of a magnetic field. They went into that pretty good. Well, uh, pretty good description in the uh, crash course video. Uh, so that will be some review for you there. And then 21.3, the magnetic properties of matter. The textbook describes that a little bit more in detail, uh, a little bit better than the video did. So focus on uh, that section. And then also 21.4, the causes of magnetism. And I just want to hit a few points <coughs> as far as that goes. So uh, the main point being, uh, if you look on in uh, section 21.4, they'll say in 1820, Hans Christian Orsted discovered that a wire carrying a current moves a nearby compass needle. And from that discovery, Andre Ampere concluded that all magnetic fields result from currents. And today it says most scientists agree with Ampere. Okay, this concept of magnetism and where it comes from and how it's related to electric force, which they know from the early days that it was, it's really been a head scratcher for physicists to uh, determine that. So this section uh, explains the current theory on that and yet <laughs> I think most physicists would say it explains it pretty well but not entirely as far as you know where does it come from in the first place? What is magnetism? So basically um, uh, Ampere has said it comes from electric charge but only only if it's moving Okay, and we'll see when we get into uh, the determining the force, uh, the interplay between electric charge and magnetism, that only applies to a moving charge, okay? So let's back up. Uh, uh, magnetism was only derived from charges that are in motion. So what makes ma uh, materials magnetic? Okay, so if we think back to our uh, theory uh, on uh, elementary particles of matter, that all matter is made of extremely tiny particles, elementary particles, and uh, we're talking even below the proton and neutron level. Things smaller than that in the nucleus, all matter is composed of these extremely tiny particles. And we said uh, those things, those particles had four characteristics, okay? Two of them uh, were that they had an electric charge and this, a second one being they're continuously in motion, okay? Well, according to Mr. Ampere, okay, old Andre, he said if that electric charge is vibrating and, uh, yeah, in a small matter, it's moving, there's electric charge moving, it's going to create a magnetic field. And in fact, a third characteristic of elementary particles, because they have a charge and because they are constantly in motion, they, the third, one of the third characteristics is it has a magnetic moment, okay, because of that motion, the fourth being that they have mass, okay, that they're, they're actually made of stuff. Okay, so at the elementary level, 
all our particles in the universe have uh, all our uh, atoms, all our elements, all our compounds, all our desks and things like that. Everything has tiny particles in motion. Okay, so everything has an electric charge and everything at the fundamental level has a magnetic moment. Now that the textbook indicates because of that tiny, tiny motion, okay, uh, <coughs> there, each atom will be given a magnetic field. And according to the domain model, and that'd be one of your answers on one of your questions, you'll have to figure out which, the domain model says, okay, under certain conditions, uh, in a element or in a material, uh, those magnetic fields of the atoms will align themselves in the same direction. They'll call that a uh, domain, in a certain domain. They will align themselves in a certain direction, especially if another magnetic field is brought near them. Okay, Just like a compass needle in a compass that's magnetized orients itself to... Uh, magnetic, uh, um, it orients itself uh, parallel to the magnetic field, the atoms will do the same thing, okay? Now, the domain theory says, okay, if uh, the, the particle motion is not strong enough, the kinetic energy, remember that motion gives it kinetic energy, okay? If that kinetic energy is stronger uh, then the magnetic field that it's set up inside the material or the one influencing it, if a magnetic uh, field is brought near an object, okay, and if that kinetic energy is stronger than the magnetic field, they will not align themselves, okay? They will be randomly aligned because the kinetic energy overrides uh, the magnetic uh, field strength, the magnetic energy, okay? But in certain materials and it's not a lot of materials there's just a very limited amount of materials where that's happens <coughs> that the kinetic energy is not strong enough especially uh, for materials that have lost electrons or maybe gained them from other ones uh, and we're talking on the outside shell it's not strong enough uh, to overcome um, the, the kinetic energy is not strong enough to overcome the magnetic field. The magnetic field strength rules the day in those materials, okay? And that gets very complicated into electron theory as to why uh, that happens, and we won't get into that, okay? But, uh, uh, so that that's basically the description of this domain model, okay? So, in a nutshell, if... Uh, the magnetic field strength is uh, smaller than the kinetic energy uh, in a particular material. Uh, it will not develop a magnetic field. It will not have magnetic properties. Uh, if the magnetic field is strong enough in those selected materials, then it will establish uh, a magnetic field, especially if another object is brought near to it, inducing Magnet magnetism in that material, just like we induced a charge in our electric uh, charges lab, your static uh, electrostatic lab. Okay, we can induce charges. We can induce a magnetic field in a material, and if that material is the right material, and uh, that domains those domains line up, those atoms line up, and that magnetic field strength that that establishes itself when they all line up if that's stronger than the kinetic motion of the of the particles in the material when that influencing magnet uh, magnetic field is taken away it may permanently induce a magnetic field in that material okay so doesn't happen a whole lot not a whole lot of materials do that and the text goes over that I just wanted to uh, explain that uh, concept that domain model a little bit uh, better as far as why they think uh, that is the case. So ma magnetism is a really mysterious of the, of the four uh, fundamental forces where electromagnetism is one of the fundamental forces and we say uh, electric charge and magnetism are joined at the hip. That 
Siamese twin, if they're Siamese twin join at the hip, the Siamese twin that is magnetism is the one that makes us do this. It's like, wow, that, that one's, it's a little nebulous even today. It's hard to explain. Okay, so real quick, uh, I also wanted you to go over sections 21, uh, 7 and 21, 8 in your textbooks. Okay, and this was introduced in your crash course video as far as uh, the force. We know uh, electric charges can produce a force. If we have a, a point charge here, a large point charge, and a small test force, okay, we've been, you've been determining uh, electric fields and drawing them with these vectors, okay, and we've shown that the force exerted on a test charge by an electric field is equal to the field strength drawn by these vectors. These vectors represent the field strength, E, we called it, times the charge. And it's going to go and it's going to push it <laughs> in the same direction as the field strength. Now, again, magnetism. Do this. Head scratch. Don't do it too much. You'll end up bald like me, but scratch, okay? Look at magnetism. These two sections in the book, I don't want to get too heavy into it, but I just want to point out, these two sections in the book say the force on a magnetic field, and we draw our magnetic field lines as such uh, from north to south uh, magnetic poles, and you did that in your lab, so you should have a good uh, uh, feel of what that looks like and how that's represented, okay? The force exerted on a charge is represented by this equation, okay? It's a lot more complicated than the equation for a point for a point charge in an electric field. And in fact, what it is, well, it's we still have the field strength. This was is B is the magnetic field strength. E here was the electric field strength. We still have the charge involved. The, the, the amount of the test charge, the small test charge, is part of it. But also in the magnetic thing, we have what? A velocity vector. And remember what, it, what we said, Mr. Ampere said, all magnetism, all magnets, all magnetic fields are created by currents. That's charges in motion. That's what this V is. Current. So if this charge is sitting right here all by itself, no motion in a magnetic field, there will be no force on it. Okay, We have to get that charge moving through a magnetic field for there to be a force. Okay, And depending on the angle at which it moves through that magnetic field over here, this term, that affects the magnetic force on it too, okay? Uh, and this is the equation <laughs> that you're gonna use. I have some uh, math problems. They all involving use of this equation, and uh, we, you're gonna have to rearrange that equation uh, depending on what you wanna solve for, okay? Uh, and so, let's do one of those uh, uh, real quick. Uh, problem 44. Okay. They want to know, uh, this is uh, chapter view problem 44. So, uh, a point charge moving at a constant speed of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2 meters per second, perpendicular to a magnetic field of a certain Tesla's experiences a certain force newtons. What is the magnitude of the point charge? So we're going to use this equation, the magnetic force of a test charge moving through a magnetic field is equal to that charge times the velocity vector times the magnetic field strength times the angle at which it moves through the field. Okay, what are we wanting to solve for here? We're wanting to know what is the magnitude of that charge? Okay, we're wanting to solve for Q. So we're going to rearrange the equation, okay? And so we'll divide everything out on this side and bring it over there. So Okay, so we get uh, that uh, force uh, magnetic will equal 
or the point charge will equal the force magnetic divided by uh, the velocity, the field strength, and the angle at which it moves through the field. Okay, what are those unknowns? They give us the magnetic force as 9.00 times 10 to the 12 newtons. They give us the velocity uh, as 1.50 times 10 to the minus 2 meters per second. Uh, they give us the field strength as 3.00 times 10 to the minus 4 Teslas. And what is our sine angle? Okay, so they say that the uh, the test charge is moving perpendicular to the field. Okay, so if we think of it over here, okay, if our test charge here is moving this direction, it's moving in line with the field. It is not moving perpendicular to the field. We need to draw it perpendicular. This would be the tangent of this field vector at this point. It would be pointed this way. Okay. We need this test charge to be moving away perpendicular to that. Okay. Because they said it's moving perpendicular to the field. Okay. The field strength vector is in this direction. The direction of travel is perpendicular to that. We take the angle between. So we join those vectors at the same tail and determine that angle right there. That's going to be 90 degrees. Okay. So we know the sine of 90 degrees is 1. Okay. So we don't really have to put that into our equation there. So then all we have to do is plug in your numbers. Okay. Uh, so I'm not going to put the units in because I check. Is this in the proper units? Newtons for force, yes. Meters per second velocity, yes. Teslas, yes. And then, of course, we have degrees and uh, in, uh, angle in degrees, okay? Uh, so 1.50 times 10 to the minus 2 times 3.00 times 10 to the minus 4, okay? And so when I do my uh, math, and you could put the sine of 90 down there if you want, or you can just put 1, the sine of 90 degrees, the sine of 90 equals 1, okay? Uh, when I did that, I come up to 2.00 times 10 to the minus 6, and what is our SI units for charge? It is coulombs. Okay. Or if you want to express it as 2.00 micro coulombs, you can do that as well. Either of those answers are valid. So it's rather just simple plug into the equation uh, for these types of problems. Okay. So notice, notice what the book says. This is the main point I want to get across with going over these two extra sections and our video <laughs> crash course video on magnetism introduced the right hand rule using this kind of device and we notice surprisingly the force on a magnetic field on a moving charge is not in the direction of the charge's direction of motion okay that's the case in an electric field the force on that is in the direction uh, of uh, a charge in motion, or it's in the direction of the field strength. Okay. Uh, in the case of a magnetic field, it is not in the direction of the charge's direction, nor is it in the direction of the field strength, the magnetic field strength. It is perpendicular to the plane that contains both the magnetic vector, field strength vector, and the the velocity vector, okay, which is a real strange uh, phenomena with magnetism. One, again, do this. Why? So what is that saying? It's saying if we have at this point a test charge and in the, let's say this plane of the chalkboard is the plane that contains both the magnetic field strength vector right here, B, 
and the velocity vector of the test charge over here, V, they're both in the same plane. They're saying the force <laughs> created by that because of the magnetic field is going to be perpendicular to that, okay, with our right hand rule. It's either going to come straight out of the board at you or go straight into the board. So what is it going to do? It's going to move that particle either coming at you or into the chalkboard. That's that's a really strange phenomena, but that's that's what happens, okay? And so uh, that's the main difference, and I wanted to get that point across because that is the main tool, and you'll recognize we used that right-hand rule when we did our electric shop class uh, explaining electricity, okay? So um, uh, that is one of the main reasons and the main building blocks and one of the main concepts to understand when we combine electric charge and magnetism in the concept of electromagnetism, this right here, this right hand rule, that a moving electric charge through a magnetic field, okay, creates a force, a motion, <laughs> one way or another, perpendicular to that field, and vice versa. A magnetic field that bring is brought into an area of moving charge produces that force as well, okay? And we'll combine those. That's the whole goal next week, is to combine these two concepts, electric charge and magnetism into electromagnetism and show how it has revolutionized our society, our culture here on Earth uh, vastly. Okay, it is the probably uh, technologically speaking and discovery scientifically speaking uh, the most significant discovery affecting our global culture uh, and bringing us into what we consider the modern industrial age okay so uh, uh that's what i had for right now in the areas to focus i will assign those homework problems tomorrow you'll just have a simple reading on magnetism uh related to the earth's magnetic field and i'll have very uh, uh small problems set for you tomorrow on friday okay sorry for the length of this video kind of wanted to stress those uh, important points because we'll be done with magnetism here at the end of this week. Okay, so long for now.